Did that strike you as a focused plot? No, me neither. The story revolves around the hunt for an android who committed murder, but almost no effort is made to explain what happened or what first allowed the robot to defy his programming. All we're told is that he had it coming, whoever he was. And why does Mr. Hamill hate the Bob Bot so much? He may be a little pompous, but C-3PO was far more annoying, much less helpful, and couldn't dance nearly as well. We visit societies that are mere plot devices, seemingly transplanted from films like Beneath the Planet of the Apes and Zardoz. But perhaps strangest of all, the slipstream itself seems to have little, if any, presence in the film. Except in that one storm scene with the wind people. You'd think they'd put more effort into this slipshod, I mean slipstream idea, seeing as they named the entire movie after it. And on that rather bleak and windy note, I'll bid you a good night and look forward to your company next week, when I have the opportunity to raise the hackles on your goosebumps in yet another pants-filling fright night on the Schlocky Horror... Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. Depending on your critical faculties and level of intoxication, Slipstream is either one of the worst films ever made, or it's a vastly underrated gem that you need to see twice in order to see how great it is. The score was composed by maestro Elmer Bernstein, near the end of a brilliant career creating memorable music for films like The Magnificent Seven, To Kill a Mockingbird, and The Great Escape. He was nominated for nine Academy Awards, finally winning an Oscar for Thoroughly Modern Millie in 1967. Unfortunately, Slipstream's score sounds as if Elmer has simply cut and pasted entire passages from his previous soundtrack for Ghostbusters. Like many actors, Bill Paxton started at the bottom and worked his way up, then back down, then round in circles with his underpants on his head. He started as a set dresser on films like Beach Blanket Bingo, moved up to directing and producing the music video for Billy Moomy's single Fish Heads, then became the Terminator's first encounter with Los Angeles Nightlife, and played Anthony Michael Hall's nemesis in Weird Science before directing Something For Real, the frightening family film Frailty. With more than 70 films to his credit, I was duty-bound to screen the one where he sports the worst haircut possible. His excellent voice work for a million cartoons notwithstanding, most of Mark Hamill's movie career has been synonymous with disaster, so he's much better in Slipstream than you'd expect. He doesn't whine at all, which is a huge relief, and he comes across quite convincingly as a rather nasty piece of work, which proves he can rise to a challenge considering the lines he's given. Shakespearean-trained actor Bob Peck plays the runaway messianic android and does it reasonably well. I'll always remember him from the 1985 BBC six-parter Edge of Darkness and as Dante in a TV Dante opposite Sir John Gielgud's Virgil, but you probably know him best as the super serious dinosaur hunter Robert Muldoon in Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. So many British actors in Hollywood find themselves chewed up and spat out by poisonous reptiles. Kitty Aldridge's career started promisingly as part of an all-star cast in Room for a View and the television series Porterhouse Blue with David Jason, followed by starring roles in American Roulette and Tiger Tiger Burning Bright. However, Slipstream was the beginning of the painful lingering end as she moved into the UK crime show circuit with appearances on tedious shows like Heartbeat and Cadfail. Boring went from work to a way of life when she married Mark Knopfler, the only guitarist in the world to play air tennis racket, and retired from acting to become an equally successful author. So the acting in Slipstream isn't all that bad, and the bleak backdrops filmed around Cappadocia in Turkey are effective. In that sense, it reminds me of Kevin Costner's The Postman. Great idea, but the script just doesn't work. Well, that's what happens when a former Little House on the Prairie writer like Tony Caden attempts science fiction. And amazingly, it was Gary Kurt, producer of Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, who allowed this to happen. See what else he lets happen and see if you can work out why as we return to the slightly more confusing half of Slipstream. Put that rack up all by yourself? I sure did. And scrub the floors? <laughs> all finished? Then you deserve to have it soft with Soft Teak Beauty Bath Oil. Most leading bath oils just float on the water. But Soft Teak swirls through the water, swirls relaxing softness evenly over your skin. Honey? I'm taking a bath in Soft Teak. Boy, these women have a soft life. Try Soft Teak Beauty Bath Oil. You deserve it. A wise man once said, doing business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. You know what you're doing, but nobody else does. 
I'll allow you to contemplate those words of wisdom, and I'll return soon with, what is it, um, Battle Truck? No, uh, Waterworld. Uh, uh, slipstream. Now try this new way to accent your figure. Cross your heart, see? You're suddenly shapelier. Well, that's what this new Playtex Fashion Magic Cotton Bra does. It crosses your heart with stretch to lift and separate. You're suddenly shapelier. This cross your heart shaping is only on Playtex regular Fashion Magic Bras and new Longline styles. Cross your heart. You'll be shapelier, honestly. And here's news about girdles. Announcing a comfortable way to look five pounds thinner. The new five pounds thinner girdle by Playtex. Prove it yourself. Fingertips sew. Press in. See? The new Playtex girdle has fingertip panels to hold you in firmly. Yet it's so different. Feels like nothing you've ever felt before. Look five pounds thinner without losing a pound. In the new five pounds thinner girdle by Playtex. and welcome to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. I'm your host, Nigel Honeybone. Tonight I offer for your amusement and enlightenment not so much a motion picture, more like an enigma. How so? Well, I'll tell you. It's directed by Steven Lisberger, the same hack who brought us Tron, which, although very pretty, was bad science and worse fiction. Given Tron's eventual popularity, you'd think it would have launched Mr. Lisberger's filmmaking career. It didn't. In a Hollywood career that spans three decades, Mr. Lisberger has only ever made four films, the fourth and final nail in his coffin I present for you tonight. I'm talking about Slipstream, a post-apocalyptic science fiction film released in 1989, which has a remarkable cast featuring Mark Hamill, Bob Peck, Bill Paxton, Robbie Coltrane, the gorgeous Kitty Aldridge, and even Oscar winners Ben Kingsley and F. Murray Abraham. Yet Slipstream is virtually a forgotten film. How can such a recent, well-financed film featuring a significant cast just fall off the face of the cinematic earth? Was it really so bad that Lisberger was never allowed to make another movie? Enough questions. Prepare to be dive-bombed by Slipstream, a film that really blows. Sure, I came out here to make my name Wanted my pool, my dose of fame Wanted my parking space at Warner's But after a year, a one-room hell A Murphy bed, a rancid smell Wallpaper peeling at the corners Sunset Boulevard, Twisting Boulevard Secretive and rich, a little scary Sunset Boulevard, Tempting Boulevard Waiting there to swallow the unwary Dreams are not enough to win a war Out here they're always keeping score Beneath the tan the battle rages Smile, a rented smile, fill someone's glass Kiss someone's wife, kiss someone's ass We do whatever pays the wages Sunset Boulevard, Headline Boulevard Getting there is only the beginning 
Sunset Boulevard, Jackpot Boulevard. Once you've won, you have to go on winning. You think I've sold out? Dead right, I've sold out. I've just been waiting for the right offer. Comfortable quarters, regular rations, 24-hour, five-star room service. And if I'm honest, I like the lady. I can't help being touched by her folly. I'm treading water, taking the money, watching her sunset. Well, I'm a writer. L.A.'s changed a lot over the years since those brave gold rush pioneers came in their creaky covered wagons. Far as they could go, end of the line, their dreams were yours, their dreams were mine, but in their dreams were hidden dragons. Sunset Boulevard, frenzy Boulevard, swamped with every kind of false emotion. Sunset Boulevard, brutal Boulevard, just like you will wind up in the ocean. She was sinking fast, I threw a rope Now I have suits and she has hope It seemed an elegant solution One day this must end, it isn't real Still I'll enjoy a hearty meal Before tomorrow's execution Sunset Boulevard, ruthless Boulevard Destination for the stony hearted Sunset Boulevard, lethal Boulevard Everyone's forgotten how they started Here on Sunset Boulevard